Hey everyone, it's Adam again for yet another tutorial on mix effect. Today we're going to talk about going beyond macros, using shortcuts on iOS and iPadOS to control mix effect and your ATEM switcher, and quite frankly, to do things that could not possibly be done with macros alone. So let's get started. Here is my iPad. I'm going to bring in my picture here, using super source. And I'm going to bring up the Shortcuts application, which exists on all iPhones and iPads running iOS 14 and up, coming soon to macOS 12 Monterey. And what is a shortcut? A shortcut is a collection of actions that do things when you tap on the shortcut or invoke it using Siri. So examples of shortcuts that you might be familiar with are a shortcut at, say, 5 o'clock in the morning to change your watch face, or a shortcut to uh, open the garage door. Or maybe you've created a shortcut to open a bunch of web pages or to save a reminder uh, when you invoke it using Siri. Third party app developers can create their own actions that integrate in shortcuts. And that's exactly what I've done with MixEffect. Before we get started, let's go over some of the automation requirements. You need to enable automations and shortcuts within MixEffect settings. You also have to allow untrusted shortcuts to run on your iOS device. There's instructions on how to do this at the mixeffect.app slash docs slash shortcuts website. Let's walk through a couple of scenarios of where you might use a macro and how it can be enhanced if you turned it into a shortcut. Let's say you have a bug that you want to display as a downstream keyer. So we have uh, media slot number 12 mix effect logo. And we're going to go to the switcher and we're just going to turn on the downstream keyer just by tapping auto and you see the bug just appeared, okay? And if I tap auto again, it disappears. So if I were to create a macro, let's say, let's do um, DSK auto title. So I'm gonna just, uh, let's just re-record this macro here. Record this. And you see the little window appears, uh, and you can move this around. And I'm just gonna tap DSK auto, and you'll see the logo appears, and then I'm gonna say stop. So now when I run this macro, it does exactly what I wanted to do. It just runs the DSK auto. Okay. Now, here's the problem. What if the downstream keyer was referencing a media still that was not the one you wanted to use? So for instance, let's say we had this mix effect logo in media slot one. And as you can see in the, in the view above, um, the mix effect logo is now in the upper left hand corner. So if we have this macro that we're running, yes, it's making the DSK auto uh, action run, but it's choosing the wrong image. So how can we create something that always chooses the correct image every single time and brings it up in the um, downstream keyer? So let's take a look. We have a shortcut here, DSK mix effect logo. And here's what it does. Step one, action number one, get details of media player one. This is an action that basically queries what's the state of media player one. And then it checks if the selected still is not number 12. And if we look here, what is not slot number 12? That's the mix effect logo that's in the bottom left hand corner. Then here's what we want to do. If the DSK details, again, we get the details details of the downstream keyer. If it's on air, we want to auto it to disappear, okay? Then we want to wait a second or however long your downstream keyer takes. Um, I think in my case, it's 15 frames, but we'll just wait one second. And then after it's gone, we're going to set the media player still to 12, which is the logo in the bottom left-hand corner. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get details of the downstream keyer once again. If the on-air status is zero, which means that on, we want to turn it on. Okay, we're also going to change the settings of the downstream keyer and make sure, um, in this case, I'm setting the rate to 15 okay, every single time. Don't really need to do that because it's already set to 15, but in case it was set to like one second, I set it to 15 frames. And then we do an auto DSK. Okay, if the DSK is on, we want it to go away. Okay, and so we set auto DSK again and we set the frames again to 15 frames. So now let's take a look at what happens when we run this shortcut. So as you can see, the uh, downstream key right now is showing the mix effect logo in the upper left, which is not what we want. We want the one in the, well, in the bottom right, bottom left. 
So if I run this shortcut, it disappears, and the correct logo appears. Okay? If I run it again, it disappears. Okay? If I run this again, it appears. So what's interesting is that if the downstream key here is currently on and I choose another logo, let's say I make a big mistake and I accidentally put this what's new in MixEffect 1.03 as a downstream key here, it's like, oops, that's not good. If I just ran the macro, it would just make this disappear and reappear. But because I have my shortcut, I could run this, get rid of that DSK, select the correct media slot, and then display it. Okay. If you were to do this in Companion, for instance, you could have a, a Companion button that switches the uh, media player fill slot, but then, and then you could tie it to the DSK Auto or just maybe turn it on, but you're not going to get this kind of smooth, make it fade away, and then if it's not the right slot, choose the right slot, and then bring it back. Okay, So that's an example of how you can use shortcuts to really do something cool with your ATEM switcher. Um, let's take another one. So we have this uh, image here. The Beyond Macros is kind of like my title slide. Okay, But what if I wanted to go to a three grid and have something else? So I'm talking, and you see the kind of the, the title of this, of this video, and then you see my iPad. But I wanted to actually toggle between two different things in Media Player 2. So I've created another macro, which does this. Get details of Media Player 2. If the selected still is number 9, which is the Beyond Macros title, we'll change it to Beyond Macros thumbnail, which is actually the one that you see here. But if the selected still is number 7, which is the thumbnail, switch it to the title. So if we watch here, if I just run this, you'll see that it's just switching them back and forth. Okay. Now, if you were to create a normal macro for this, you basically have to have two macros, one to toggle media player two, still number seven, and then another one to do media player two, still number nine. You'd have two buttons. If you were to do this in companion, you'd also have two buttons. Okay. But with shortcut, you basically have one button that just runs. You can actually add this to companion because MixEffect uh, allows you to run shortcuts through Companion button, and I can just push a button right here on my stream deck, right here, to toggle the graphic. And you can see the shortcut running on the iPad. So now that I've set it to this Beyond Shortcuts uh, title, I can go talk to you and continue with the rest of my video. And it looks great. And then um, I can switch between this one here, and I can go back to the three grid, and it stays set. And if I switch back to this one, the two grid, and I tap the shortcut, and I go back to the three grid, you see that it changed. So let's take a look at another one. So I have a, an Apple TV that's being powered, that's plugged into the A10 switcher, that's being powered by this iPod Touch that's running VLC, okay? So VLC uh, is running uh, some animated super source backgrounds over here. So uh, what I wanna do is basically set the details of the super source art to use the Apple TV. So I might set this up like at the beginning of my show. I can just run this uh, shortcut. It's a very quick shortcut. This could also be a macro or a companion button. But if I wanted to add like additional actions to this with conditionals and things like that, um, I could I could do that through here. So I just run this and it sets the Apple TV as my super source background. So for instance, if the background was say my Mac Mini background. A, um, you know, a teal screen, uh, you can set it like that. You can even do things like uh, tap this shortcut and you can say ask each time. So now when you run the shortcut, it'll say, it'll display a menu right here and say, you know, what do you want your field source to be? I say, well, well, maybe I'll set them to big color bars. Okay, Obviously not a good example, but you can just run this again and it'll say, oh, okay, let's set it to the Apple TV and boom, you're done. Shortcuts is great in that it can actually prompt the user for additional information. So it can display menus. Um, it could display prompts where you have to enter text. Um, here's another example of, let's go to the super source section. Let's say I wanted to swap, um, and let's actually take off my MixEffect logo right there. So just make that disappear. Let's say 
in my super source right here, I wanted to put box three in the position of box four, which is the media player. So let's look, take a look at what box three is showing. It's showing my iPhone, which is not connected right now, but let's uh, change that to color bars, okay? So box three now is, is color bars, and you can see that uh, right, right there, bars. So I've created this shortcut, which is called swap boxes, swap box details. Take a look at this. So if we run through the actions that it's doing, uh, it's doing this. So I have a little dictionary, which kind of gives me a list of, of options. And I say, choose from dictionary. So that's going to prompt me to choose what box I want to set as the box number one. I'm going to basically ask this question again for box number two. And I'm going to say, um, if the first box index is the same as the second box index that was chosen, it's going to show an alert that says you cannot swap a box with itself. And then otherwise, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get all the details of the two boxes, and I'm going to swap them. Okay. I'm also going to ask the user, do I want to swap the sources? Okay. So if I say yes, that means if I'm choosing box four and three, box three will get media player two, and box four will get bars. If I say no, they'll just swap the details of the boxes, but the sources will stay the same. So let's run this. So say, which box do I want to swap? I'll swap number three, and number four. And I'm going to say, do I want to swap the sources? In this case, I'm going to say no. And you'll see on the interface, box three is now where box four was, and box four is now where box three is. And it retains the exact size, position, everything. Now, if I ran it and swapped the sources, let's see, I'm going to run this again. Swap the sources, yes. You'll see box four is now showing bars, and box three is now showing media player two. I'm going to go back, do that one more time, and swap the sources. Okay, and we're back to box three is bars, and box four is media player two. Okay, which as you can see is happening right there. So let's switch back the way we want it box three, box four, and we're not going to swap the sources. Could you have done that with a macro? Not, not, not very well because there's no way to do this kind of conditional uh, stuff or kind of copy, figure out what's in one Mac, one box, and copy it to another box. Let's take a look at another example: swap mic and iPhone audio. In my previous video, I had uh, an iPhone which was situated over here, and then obviously my camera and my microphone over here. And what I did was I moved over here to talk about what was happening over here. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to swap the audio sources. So in this shortcut, I'm doing this. Get the audio source of mic one left channel, which is this audio source right here. If it's on, which means if the mix option is on, I'm going to turn it off, OK? And then I'm going to set the details of the iPhone, um, the iPhone input, which is input number three, and I'm going to set its mix option to on, OK? Otherwise, if mic one was on, then I'm going to turn it, if it was off, I'm going to turn it on, and then I'm going to turn the iPhone one off, OK? That way you didn't hear kind of like double audio from me. And that's simply, that's very simple what it does. If we actually take a look at the audio here, we can see it running. So again, there's no, no audio that's going to happen when I turn on the iPhone because the iPhone is not plugged in right now. But you'll see what happens. You see that the iOS input was turned on, and then the mic one input was turned off. And then when I ran it again, mic one input turned on, and the iPhone got turned off. So that's an example of what you can do um, with controlling audio. So we go back to SuperSource. As you know, SuperSource on the ATEM Mini Extreme can show up to four boxes. But you also have access to two DVEs in the upstream keyers. So you could theoretically have six boxes visible on screen at any time. You can't exactly animate the six boxes, the fifth and sixth boxes, but you can at least display them on screen. So let's take a look at how this works. So six super source layouts. Uh, it's going to display a menu. Do I want to turn it on? And then it's going to actually have um, options to kind of highlight the boxes. So if I choose the six left option, it's going to run the six left preset. 
actually the six left shortcut that I have, which actually turns on the um, thing. We're going to take a look at that one. And if I choose reset, it's going to reset the layout and set the DVE details for USK 1 and 2 to reset their size in case they were highlighted. Um, if I choose 1, it's going to highlight box 1 and reset sizes for the, DSK, the USKs 1 and 2. Okay, so Let's take a look at the 6 left shortcut. This is the one that does all the magic. So it's a, 70, it's a shortcut with 17 actions. It's going to set the super source art details to no source of color 2, which we don't want because we're using my uh, animated backgrounds using VLC uh, connected to the iPod Touch through the Apple TV. We're going to delete that one. We're going to get details of the upstream keyer 1. Okay? If it's on air, we're going to make it disappear. We're going to get details of the upstream keyer 2. If it's on air, we're going to make it disappear. Then we're going to set the key type for the USK1 to DVE, because remember, it could be Luma, Chroma, or something else. Uh, and then we're going to say, do the same thing for um, USK2. And then we're going to set the details of it. Okay, And so these details uh, basically set the position and size and mask, if there was any, for the DVE. So I'm going to position number one to be in box position five, and I'm going to position number two to be in box position six. Okay, And it's going to use fill source camera six. Let's just change this right now so you can see like the color two, and then we'll set this one to color one. Okay. And then I'm going to get super source presets um, USK six left, and I'm going to set the super source preset to that. Okay, and then I'm going to enable on air USK one and two, which we had disabled earlier here. So if we run the shortcut, watch what happens. I now have a six super source layout within Mix Effect. Okay. Now, if I ran my uh, shortcut here, which is the six super source layout, you'll see I can now highlight one, which is this camera here. I could run this shortcut again, the highlight number three. Okay. And I can also highlight five and six. Now again, you can't do full animations like you do with the super source animation, but at least it'll, it'll pop it and make it a little bigger. Okay, and if I want to reset the layout, I can just tap reset. So that's just a sampling of the kinds of things that you can do with Mix Effect to see all the actions. Take a look at this. Here are all the actions that are supported uh, within shortcuts for Mix Effect. And you can see there's a lot of them, um, over eighty. I'm almost near hundred, I think. So I encourage you to take a look at the website at mixeffect.app slash docs slash shortcuts to learn all about how you can incorporate shortcuts into your video productions and to do things, again, like I said at the beginning, that quite frankly, macros just aren't well suited to, to do. And they're just not up to the task because macros just run everything uh, and they don't have any concept of like, well, if you set and do this, otherwise do that. But with shortcuts, you can do that. There's just one more thing I'd like to show you. How to use Siri to invoke your shortcuts using just your voice. Do auto transition. So there you go. I hope you've learned a few things about how you can use shortcuts to go beyond macros with Mix Effect and your ATEM switcher. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.